Hi, Julie here. In this video, we're making 3D Valentine's boxes. I love 3D cookies. I think you've gathered that by now. Why would you want a 3D cookie box? Well, one, it makes a beautiful keepsake, but it's also edible. It can be filled with edibles too and make a beautiful Valentine's gift. So let's talk about the parts that are needed for the project. It's basically a seven cookie project. Um, two contoured sides, which I'm actually going to show you how to make because they're particularly unique. A larger base for the bottom of the basket, which is just a heart. That one's about seven or eight inches, and I custom cut that as well. I'll show you what I use for that. A lid of the same dimensions as the base with a cutout in the center. An insert heart that will go behind the upper heart to form the lid. And then if you'd like, this is purely optional, these additional two pieces. I've cut out two teardrop shapes, again using my Atiko graduated teardrop cookie cutter set to form little ends of bows. We'll piece those together and I'll show you actually how to stick those upright so there's some dimension to the bow. Just a quick um, note about how I cut all these shapes. We'll talk about the contoured pieces next. The base was large. I couldn't find a, cut a cookie cutter big enough for it. So I cut a piece out of acetate to form a template and I simply lay this on the dough and cut around it. Um, to create that particular shape. This also formed the outer part of the lid. To create the window and the grid, I took a standard size heart cutter, this may be four inches, and centered it and cut that piece out, removed that piece to create that effect. I want a slightly bigger heart to back the lid just so that I have enough room to glue it onto the lid without the glue peeking out. So again, I used about a five or six inch heart here. And then these other pieces to form the bow, the bow, as I said, I used a teardrop cutter from the Atiko graduated cutter set. If I want to put little trailers on the bow, like little ribbons trailing off as I did on this lid, I used um, actually another cutter. This is a, supposed to be a piece of candy and I just cut off the end. So get creative with your cutters. You, might very, you may find that you very well have a shape you're looking for in an existing cutter and you can just cut it up. Um, and then in some boxes, I also have a little rose. This too was um, hand cut using a custom template because I couldn't find exactly the shape I wanted. All of these templates, both the roses and the big heart can be found on my website. So if you're interested in using those shapes, um, feel free to download them from there. When I contour dough, basically I like to work with a dough that doesn't spread too much. Um, basically has a relatively high ratio of flour to fat. And in this case, I'm working with my cutout cookie gingerbread dough. Um, which is made with all shortening instead of butter. So it tends to spread even less because butter spreads more than shortening. Okay, so we want to bake a, on the side of the pan with the pan upright so that the dough doesn't slump. If I were to have the heart pan lying flat, the dough would just slide off the side. So I'm going to be baking one half of the heart at each time. And I cut a strip about one and three quarters wide to fit the height of the pan. I'm just going to gently drape it over the side and just long enough to cut to um, go halfway around the pan. And I'm going to trim that off. Uh, you don't want too much overhang because it will spread in the oven and potentially break. So you want to trim it slightly above the halfway point. Then put that in the oven, bake it as you normally would. I bake it 375, let it cool, and then it'll pop off the side of the pan. Again, I have a whole video on contouring cookie dough that shows how I do that for my um, Easter basket cookies. So that's the basic shaping process. And when it pops off, it looks beautiful with very little cracking if you follow the tips in that video. Let me clean up my area here and we'll get um, back to that step of wrapping the sides of the baskets. I pre-cut these frosting sheets. These are edible papers so that they will come up um, just shy of the top of the box. I wanna leave a little bit of margin for border. And this particular frosting sheet um, is somewhat sheer. You can see through it and I've got a dark gingerbread that I'm working with. So I'm going to actually back it with another frosting sheet that's a little heftier. Um, if you've got um, a heftier non-see-through sheet uh, type of frosting sheet, they do vary, then by all means just use one layer. Copy Cake is my favorite supplier because I can buy them in bulk pretty, pretty, pretty inexpensively. The other thing I like to do is just put down a piece of parchment paper or two when I'm working so that I can keep my surface free of corn syrup. And I'm going to apply a little bit of corn syrup to the top of the backing paper. And again, you don't want it pooling. I got a lot down there on that first swipe. So we're gonna blot some of that extra off. Just dab enough on so it's tacky. Because if, it if you get too much on, it'll cause it, it you'll either, it'll either eat through the paper I'm gonna put on top of it, 
or it'll leave a dark spot and look uneven in color. So I'm just putting on enough to make it tacky and I've got a little too much in a couple of areas so I'm going to take these paper towels that I've got and just kind of blot it. You want to be a little bit careful when you're handling frosting sheets not to overly handle them because they can tear pretty easily. So I got some extra off and I'm going to take my pre-printed frosting sheet. You can print your own if you've got an edible, a printer with food coloring, outfitted with food coloring and dedicated to that process. But they also come pre-printed in all these lovely patterns. As you can see, this one's a little bit sheer and up against the gingerbread you'd see through it. So I am going to just lay it on top here so it's less see-through. Kind of matching the paper that's underneath. Oops. And then we're going to apply this strip to the side of the box. It just so happens these strips are just long enough to make it around my half heart, which is rather handy. Now I'm going to apply corn syrup to the back of the wafer paper so that the so that I can stick it up onto the gingerbread. I'm not dabbing on the gingerbread itself simply because the paper doesn't go all the way to the top of the gingerbread and if I overshoot with the corn syrup and don't, you know, leave any exposed that doesn't end up getting covered by paper, then it just leaves a shiny spot of corn syrup showing that we don't exactly like. A sponge brush is good for this job because it actually carries less, believe it or not, corn syrup than a brush with bristles and the bristles don't get stuck in it. So I prefer to work with a sponge brush here. I do have some extra in a couple of areas that I'm just going to kind of gently take off. The corn syrup dries pretty darn fast, so you don't want to like do this and then wait to this um, contoured side. And the best way to do this is to is to use the, your work surface as your guide so that the end of the bottom of your paper is flush against that work surface. And pull it kind of taut and just wrap it all the way around. It just comes to the end. Just make sure that it's thoroughly pressed onto the cookie because it can easily peel off if it's not glued down. We'll also want to make sure it wraps the corners of these these um, contoured sides. One thing I should point out, um, before I even started wrapping these with wafer paper, I did file down the ends of these heart contoured sides so they'd actually fit nicely together. Once they're baked, there might be a rough ragged edge and you want to make sure they fit nicely together. So to do that, I just took a microplaner before I even put the paper on and filed them flat. You can see that there. So that's a step to remember to do. I'm just going to put a little bit more corn syrup on the end here so this wraps all the way around and sticks down nicely all the way to the very end. Normally I'd let this dry maybe a little bit longer, maybe a half an hour before I put this together just to make sure that all the paper is nicely planted in place. But it looks pretty good. So I'm going to bring over my base that I talked about earlier. This was cut again with that custom template that you'll find on my website. And I want to glue this onto the box. So the key is to get over it and make sure that the pieces are centered nicely. And I'm going to glue this in place um, from the inside so that you don't see the glue. And again, I'm using a thick royal icing because it dries more quickly and expedites this whole process. And I'm going to apply it pretty liberally to the inside. I think that's pretty well centered. I look at it from all angles. And I'm just applying it to the interior seam. And I'll turn the box so everybody can see what I'm doing. And I'm doing the other side. I'll come up through here as well, through the ends, the ends where the two pieces come together. And then just to make sure, take a clean finger, just to make sure that that glue is really in there and really planted both to the bottom of the cookie and to the sides. I, didn't, I then smear it, I just smear it in, in with my finger and also up the sides. You could be a little bit neater about it if you wanted to, but I'm going to fill that with cookies or maybe even line it with a little bit of um, tissue paper before I put the cookies in so that seam isn't the most visible thing and I don't worry about it all together too much. Okay, so the box is basically to, together. Um, you couldn't load it up right now until that icing had completely dried and I'd allow a few hours for that. Um, but I do want to put a few more details on it. Um, in this particular box, I added pink dots along the upper edge and I used a star tip to create this trailing 
kind of star border along the bottom edge and then dots again on the outer edge. But again, there's no particular right or wrong way to do these bottom borders. You could use all dots, you could pipe little doily shaped zigzag pattern, which you'll see pictured on some of the boxes that I did for Valentine's Day last year. But let me um, put these glasses on and show you what I did here. To do any kind of textured icing border, you need to work with a very thick icing. This is pretty close to my glue consistency. And I've got a star tip in here. It's a number 18, I believe. My cookie's sliding a little bit, so it would be handy to have this on a non-skid surface. I'm just going to kind of close out the bottom seam here. I just think that neatens it up a bit. And to do that, I apply a little bit of pressure and pull back, pressure, pull back, pressure, pull back, and continue in this vein all the way around. Okay, now we're back to put the lid together. And I've got a couple of different heart inserts that I could use. Um, this is a bird one that I did earlier in another video. I showed exactly how to rubber stamp it and tint it with um, dry um, petal dust. Uh, I think I'm gonna choose though this other cookie which was constructed exactly the same way just cause it's a little bit bigger and it's gonna fit behind my, my um, pre-decorated heart top already. Again, this was cut, the outer part of this heart was cut with my custom template and then I used a smaller three to four inch heart to cut out the interior. This particular cookie was stenciled to create the white pattern and then I applied a lot of dot work. I've got videos both on stenciling and dot work to show you how I did that. Again, we're just focusing here today on the assembly. Now to put this together, very, very simple, same gluing, cut and kind of gluing and pasting technique, except I'm gonna use white glue this time so that if any peeks out, I don't have a big brown blob uh, showing underneath the window here. But I've applied it pretty liberally. I'm just gonna center this heart on top of it. Press it down. It's nice to have your base in front of you and I'm gonna bring that back over because you wanna make sure that when you're applying that heart underneath it, that you apply it so that it actually clears the base and that the, the lid sits centered on the cookie. If you have it too high, it can interfere with that and not close properly. So it's nice to start with a base and then come back and put the top together and just make sure they fit nicely together. The one last element I'm gonna put on this one is the bow. I talked about cutting these with a teardrop cutter. You could easily glue them flat and that would be the end of the day, but I like to give it a little more three dimensionality because 3D is my name. And to do that, I will prop one or both of them up with a little bit of paper towel. This is kind of, um, this is a technique I use a lot. And in fact, I used it on some stocking 3D stocking cookies that I did recently. Again, I'm working with a light glue just so that if any peeks out, you could work with pink or white here. You know, it's less likely to be seen. And it's easier to correct if you wanna shift the placement of the bow. You know, it's easier to wipe white off anything than it is to wipe red off, for instance. So I've got one propped, and you would leave that paper towel underneath it propped in place until these had dried in place. It's as simple as that, and that might be a couple of, a couple of hours. Got a little extra glue showing here, which I don't really love. So I'm gonna take my handy trussing needle and take that extra out. And then the finishing touch here is just, I'm gonna put a little red dredge. This is probably a five millimeter or six millimeter dredge. It's not so little, it's actually on the bigger side. I'm gonna put one down here. That allows me to put a little more glue at the base of the bow, which also helps to keep it together. And I'm gonna put one right on top where they intersect. This is an area where I could probably use a red glue because I'm putting it on red icing, but I've just got white, so we're gonna hope that works and not show. And that's, that's it, that's putting the lid together. You let, now let both the lid and the base completely dry and then you can stack one on top of the other as you see on those two boxes there. Fill them with cookies or give them as, the, as they are as special gifts on Valentine's Day. Thanks for listening, live sweetly. Mm -hmm.